first statement is, wow, what a what an atmosphere for this this type of game. It's just uh, special to be a part of the, that rivalry series and, and what a fun atmosphere to come into. And uh, I just felt like we dug ourselves too big of a hole in that first half. We couldn't quite get over the, the hump. We kept cutting it to eight and could never quite uh, get over the top and, and make a run right there. But I was uh, pleased with the way our kids really uh, battled and competed, uh, which is what I would have expected in this type of a game. Questions for Coach Williams. Uh, Coach, as far as, I mean, with a rivalry game like this, there's a lot that goes into it apart from you're playing an excellent team. There's also some an emotional element. It, it's kind of a process of preparing for a big game for you and your team for the first time. What was that like, and what did you guys learn from it? Well, what we tried to do was just to try to take business as usual approach. We tried not to make it bigger than it was and just the next game on our schedule. And, and every single game so far this year, we've said, you know, the next game is the most important game on our schedule because it's the next game. And, and we kind of tried to take that um, same approach with this game. And, and um, I wouldn't say downplay it, but really uh, just try to make it business as usual so that we didn't build it up uh, too big. But um, I, I feel like our approach was good. I feel like our kids were very prepared. I feel like um, at times we we didn't defend the way we wanted to and, and we um, didn't always execute the way we prepared to execute, but I felt like we were overall prepared and ready to play today. And what made the Jacks tough? Well, before we came in, I said, I feel like what sets them apart is they are extremely physical and they're very deep. And um, now that I've seen it in person, I would say uh, I'm a believer. They're very physical and, and they're very deep. And they have lots of kids that can come in and, and contribute and, and uh, make big plays. And, and they're, they're uh, very fundamentally sound. They execute their offense with great timing. Um, but I would say that the biggest thing is just they are extremely physical. They, uh, they took our post players out of the game today and, and um, uh, I thought really made us pay when we turned the basketball over. That's obvious with 19 points off turnovers and, and kind of shoving it down our throats and making us pay when we had mistakes. Was that the biggest thing that separated them from, you know, they exceeded your defensive numbers from the season? Was that was the transition points uh, or uh, points off turnovers? Did you feel like that was that was why they did that? I would say there's no question about that. Points off tr uh, turnovers and also the, the fast break points there, you know, you add those 25 of their 72 points. I really wasn't that disappointed with how we defended in the half court with the exception of um, we gave up penetration a little too easy in the, in the first half and, and far too many layups. But uh, I was not disappointed with our half court defense. It was the transition defense and, and points off turnovers that really killed us. You mentioned you really couldn't quite close that gap to get that big round at the end and you contribute to that. They just were able to hit all those shots. Is there anything else you can do on D? Or just hope that they miss a few of those shots down the stretch? Well, I mean, yeah, certainly I think we can control that with, with ball pressure, talking, getting through screens, and, and not just hoping that they miss shots. But more importantly, what I attributed to was, you know, we'd get it to eight, we'd maybe get a defensive stop, and then we really needed that big bucket, and we, we, we came down and just didn't uh, execute, didn't put the ball in the basket, you know, maybe got a great shot, just weren't able to, you know, put it through when we needed to, those big shots that um, that, that we needed. and. And um, you know, I think if we could have got over that hump, that that we would have maybe built some some momentum going. And and you know, who knows? But sometimes the ball just doesn't go through the bucket. Coach is still early in the conference race, but these are the last two teams, you know, that hadn't lost a, a league game. Um, what's going to be important to you guys in order to to keep pace with them? They've been very good in the past with not dropping games that, that they kind of have no business dropping. How do you guys kind of? stay within shouting distance so when you get them at your place, you know, can, there some, can be some big stakes. You know, at this point, you know, all we're c concerned about is just taking one game at a time and staying focused and lock in on that. You know, it's so early, three games in to keep talking, to already be, it's just crazy to me that we're already talking about, oh, these were the, the two unbeatens. You know, it's just so early for that. So I, I feel like at this point, our focus immediately shifts to what we do, need to do to beat Kansas City on the road on uh, next Saturday. And we're just going to continue to take one game at a time and um, try to get better and be playing our best basketball in March. Coach, I got a question. Uh, we're doing a story on uh, Ashley Addy. She's a senior, and I know <coughs> this is your, your first year in that. Uh, what does she bring to the state program, the South Dakota State program, in, in, in what you've seen so far? Well, she's a special player. She, she's a very special player. She's uh, 
she's very difficult to guard. She she can shoot the three, 47 percent three point shooter coming into tonight, and and um, and she can go off the dribble. She's she's strong enough to take a hit. She's you know she's just a, a special, very difficult to defend player, and and um, you know I certainly. <laughs> will not be disappointed when we don't have to guard her anymore. So anything else for Coach Williams? Good coach just a little off topic, but you know Mirror scheduling is in place now, it's kinda of moving on. Um, what are what are your thoughts on some of the pros and cons just a couple weeks into that? Well I think that, you know, the cons are just basically, you know, we've we've talked about, you know, when you're playing at the same day, same time as your men's team that sometimes fans get split and when you play um, in close conjunction like we do now with a lot of teams, North Dakota State, South Dakota State, Omaha, Kansas City, all being you know right on that I-29 where it's feasible for fans to travel. Um, it, it makes it difficult on fans to be able to get that done with this mirror schedule. But um, you know, pros personally, my husband happens to be on the staff of the men's program. So for us, it's kind of nice to have someone at home all the time with our children. So. Anything else?